Hello everyone, welcome back to my Batman the Animated Series Shadow of the Bat solo playthrough, although it's classed as uh, cooperative for the purposes of the game rules. And we are carrying on in the episode booklet, we're up to episode 3 which is the first proper mission. I have it before you here, it is called Heart of Ice and is Mr Freeze themed. So I'm going to quickly read the setup, then we'll go into the specifics for part 1, which is what you see laid out before you, along with a lot of tiles to go over. And then some just general housekeeping as well for uh, some changes to the team and the items being used. So here we go. Unusual cold related crimes have been targeting Goth Corp Industries and Batman is forced to intervene against the mastermind criminal who calls himself Mr. Freeze. Using high tech equipment and motivated only by thoughts of revenge, Freeze is able to overpower the vigilante and soon makes his way towards his ultimate target, Ferris Boyle, the CEO of Goth Corp. So that's the general setup, and then specifically for Heart of Ice Act 1, which is what this is. A new icy threat is stealing experimental tech from Gothcorp facilities across Gotham City. The heroes must stop Mr. Freeze before he gets away with the canisters he needs to complete his scheme. So the general overview, it is in two rooms as you can see before you. There's a lot of placed elements. The ice with the yellow border is treated as difficult terrain, it doesn't block cut uh, line of sight or anything. But it costs two to move through it. The cooperative rules, the heroes win if they rescue all the bystanders, we'll go into the specifics about that in a second, and Mr. Freeze receives a KO, so Mr. Freeze gets reduced to zero health. He has 18 health. The villains win at the end of round four if Mr. Freeze is not KO'd because he escapes with a canister or if any hero receives a KO token. So that about covers it for the setup, now we can go into the specifics. So here's what the board looks like and you'll see there's six civilians, three up the top, three at the bottom and they all have Entangle 3. There's a reminder for what Entangle does here, Entangled figures cannot perform any actions except melee range, although civilians don't try and break free, we have to break them free with our team. Uh, they can't be moved by gadgets or abilities and they don't affect breakaways. Each hit from any attack reduces the entanglement by one. So to free one civilian they would have to get three successes through on a melee attack, presumably against a defensive zero, so you just need to get three successes, so not too bad, and there's six of them that need to be freed before turn four. The other stats effect that might come into play here is cold, because Mr. Freeze does cold. If they get a cold token, movement is reduced by one until the affected figure's next turn. Sorry, the end of the affected figure's next turn, so two turns of it. The new Henchman on the board is this gentleman right here, you can just about see on the right. He is called a Crusher. They move 3, they hit for 4, they block for 3, they have 8 HP and they have a special rule called Huge Henchman. They count as 2 for the purposes of breaking away from combat, if you're trying to run away from him. And if he does at least 2 hits with his melee attack, you get stunned. Which is one less action. Which is bad. And then Mr. Freeze's card. He likes attacking the person with the lowest focus value, because I guess he doesn't like dumb people. At the end of his turn, place an icy terrain token under each enemy figure Mr. Freeze has attacked. Hopefully I have enough of those. Uh, if Mr. Freeze deals at least two wounds and his default damage is three, that figure receives one stun, unless they already have cold token, in which case they get entangled four. So they get stuck for a while because they're frozen to the spot, basically. Also, Mr. Freeze ignores slow terrain. So I think that about covers that. Just one last thing to go over, which you might have seen a hint at right here, and that's to go over the team specifics. So here is the team I'm going to be using. Also, I looked out the Kickstarter backer stretch goal thing, which is these little containers, so you can kind of keep things more neat and tidy. So I've done that, although it does mean I've had to pile in up the cards for equipment just so there's room. So I got rid of Barbara for this one, and it's not because she cost me the last victory, it's because she's more suited for missions where there's bombs and stuff. She'll be showing up later. I decided to try one of the stretch goal characters. I was going to use Etrigan, because I like Etrigan, but he has like a teleport across the map ability and that kind of circumvents the whole having to walk across the ice. So it kind of defeats the purpose of the mission, I feel. So I decided not to use him. And I brought instead Supergirl. So she's also very, very powerful for the record. She only has two focus though, which is actually a detriment to her because all of her cards do better stuff if you spend focus. And that also means she can't really use reroll because if she ever runs out of focus, she counts double attacks as blanks. So she does have some downsides, but she moves four. She rolls three attack dice by default. She's got four defense by default, rather. Uh, two upgrades, two focus, 15 health. 
and the two upgrades I've taken for her. Uh, here we are. Invulnerability, Supergirl is not affected by harmful terrain and cannot be put under fire and receives defend plus one, so her defense is basically five by default. If she ever pays one focus, she can cancel a, a villain card being played, which isn't relevant in uh, cooperative mode as far as I can tell. So it might mean that she's more a character based for when you're playing a human opponent, but give her a try anyway. And the other one, Flight, which is also just an eight. She receives move plus one and gains the flying trait, which means she cancels elevated for purposes of attacking. Pay one focus, if she moves through a friendly figure, she may play, place one of them in adjacent square after her move ends. So she can move someone with her if she's willing to pay that focus. Oh, and also she has the special ability called Powerhouse. She can use a special action, which is probably just like she can just do it during her turn to swap out one of those innate skills for something else. So, for instance, once she's flown in, she doesn't really need flight anymore. Get rid of that, swap something in. I also included the stretch goal equipment, so Batman has replaced his grappling hook with the zipline. Everything else he has is the same, and Nightwing is using the exact same defense... Uh, Equipment, not defense. The exact same equipment he's been using in the last ones. They have all the same upgrades, Batman, Nightwing, and Robin. All the same. And with that, I think we can get started. So before we draw an AI card, I've got to roll some dice. For Batman, I'm going to select his middle as a double punch, because I want him to free a civilian this turn. We'll roll his other two real quick. He's got a block and a move. I'm going to give the move to... Nightwing and the block to Robin. I don't think the block will be used, but... Either way, and Nightwing's dice didn't really roll that. There we go. Oh, wow. Well, he'll share a double punch to Batman, double punch to Supergirl, and his variable I will make into movement as well, because I think they're going to focus on freeing civilians while Supergirl goes in as a distraction. Speaking of which, her dice are loaded with doubles. Case in point. So she'll give a double ranged to Robin. She'll keep the double move for herself and share a double move with Nightwing and then Tim Drake. Wow, okay, that's pretty good as well. Sh he'll share the block to Supergirl, I think. He'll keep the double, no, he'll give the double range to Batman, keep the punch for himself. That means the only move he's getting, oh, he's not getting any move if I do it this way. Ah, uh, hmm. I'm just debating whether I, sh I should actually, all right, let's switch Batman's there, like that, so Robin will get a move from him, so at least he can move somewhere. And then we have to come around here, draw the first AI card, not the AI card, but card in general. Oh, okay, Mr. Freeze will be going first, it is technically AI. So it's not very advantageous for Mr. Freeze to have gone first, this is Mr. Freeze right here, he has three actions of course. He wants to attack the person with the lowest focus, which is a draw between Supergirl and Robin, but he has a bunch of hard goons in his way, and probably it would be stupid to like just go out there and get murderized by them all. So I'm I'm gonna do what a competitive player would have to do with Mr. Freeze, which is go over to the crates and try and find the canister. So he's gonna burn his first turn doing that, similarly to Catwoman stealing the diamond first turn last time, just because I don't wanna charge Mr. Freeze out because that'd make it too easy to take him out. So we're gonna run with that and he's just gonna burn his first turn because I, I don't want him charging. If, again, like I talked about last time, sometimes I think you have to house some of that stuff just to have a narrative going. Anyway, next AI card is Supergirl, okay. So we are going to move with Supergirl, but first of all, quickly want to go over the flying trait she gets from the, the flight power-up I've given her, because it's not quite the same as Man Bats. It's a specific glossary term on page 39. Flying figures do not need to break away from enemy figures, they may move through, but not end the move on figures and ignore non-blocking terrain effects. So. She isn't counting as elevated, that's the important part, because otherwise that would mean she can only do ranged attacks. So, she's going to spend the only move icon she has, which is a double, which gives her 8 in total to play with. And she's just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, because she's not slowed by terrain. And she's going to be a big old distraction at the, the four hired goons with guns there, and start smacking them. Although, I just realised she's, well, she can do two ranged attacks and one really good punch. If she takes out the one in front of her, she'll be able to ranged attack. So let's spend that double punch she got from Nightwing. Her base is th three, three, yes. And she's thrown in two more. And it'll be damage minus two. Now where's a good place to roll? Because it's gonna move all the scenery elements. You're just gonna have to take my word for what I roll, I think. Uh, let's see, so it's damage minus two. She'd only be doing one damage. 
See, that's the downside. So if she spends focus, she only has one focus left. I will. I will, because I want her to be able to do more here. So re-rolling two defense, and she's got two more successes. So that's five damage minus two. She took him out, which is exactly what I needed. Now she can make a ranged attack. Although actually, diagonals, diagonals probably count for being adjacent. Hmm, let me double check. Alright, yeah, I was just double checking that you can make a ranged attack while someone is adjacent to you, and you can, it's, you just can't target a person who is adjacent to you. So she's only going to get the chance, really, to take out him and maybe him, because she's got two doubles. So I don't want to use rerolls for her, though. I'm just going to go all in on the one to take him out. So her base attack again is a massive three, and then she's throwing in an extra four. So once again, there is no way with everything that could possibly move on this table that I can roll here. I'm going to roll right here, and we have more than enough. Two, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven minus two. He is very much unconscious as well. Maybe she's a bit too powerful for the for the story mode. Mm, either way, she's going to bank a punch. Actually, she might as well try the punch against the guy she's adjacent to. I forgot she had a punch block from Robin. Sure. So that's three plus one. So she's only rolling four dice against him. Four dice minus two. She aimed for two. He's still conscious, though. She did a lot of good work, though. So this thug here has two damage of his three. And that's, that's it for her. She's got plus one defense. So in total, she's rocking six defense right now. And the next AI card is... I keep on calling them AI cards. It is the Hired Guns. All right, well, before the Hired Guns do anything, the Enforcers get a free action. So they're just going to go one, two, I guess, because you can't move three onto there. And one, two. That's the only two Enforcers on the map. The Hired Guns want to get to range three and then shoot. Uh, let's see. He can move diagonally and go one, two, because that's yellow, so he can stand on it, whatever it's meant to be. I think it's a container. And then the other guy, he's not going to be able to get to range 3, because it would be 1-2, you know, they only have movement 3. So he'd go 1-2 and shoot her from there. He's still able to do it. So they're both shooting at her for 2 damage each. And again, she's normally base 4 defense. She's getting plus 1 from Robin and plus 1 from the invulnerability roll. And she cannot come under fire, so it doesn't matter. So 2 damage against her defense dice. If I pull back out a bit more, you might be able to see the dice I'm rolling. I'm rolling like roughly here. That's the one thing I didn't think of with this table setup. There's there's not enough room for blocks. Or, sorry, defense dice. Uh, speaking of blocks, though, she blocked the first shot fully. And then the second, she did do two. Yeah, she blocked them both. Fired the rest of the team here. She can handle it herself. All right, well, that's the only two hired guns left on the map. Next card is the Batman. So taking out Freeze is obviously important, but so is saving the hostages, because that's the other win condition. Batman's only got one move icon he can spend, so let's quickly shift that up. It gives him three movement. So he's going to go one, two, and go there, because he can't move up anymore. And then he shall initiate a melee attack to try and free the middle hostage, because Robin can only really reach this one. So I want him to be punching that one. And he might as well go all in. Just He's only got to beat three but he's not going to be able to do any other physical attacks this turn, so he's going to blow two double icons for a total of six dice, needing three successes to free the civilian. One, two, yeah, okay, yep. The civilian has been freed and runs away. I guess they're, like, encased in ice, what killed the dinosaurs, etc. So, then he's going to do, he can do a ranged attack, at this lady to try and free her. Presumably you're allowed to use range attacks to free entangle people. I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to run it that you can. So again, that's two base plus two more. So just four dice this time. And again, three successes. Exactly three. Boom. Flee, little lady. So there's two civilians off the map. Batman's got one defense die left, so he, he's done. So we're just going to draw another card. It is Tim Drake. So Tim's only goal is to free that civilian, which should be, fingers crossed, easy. He's spending his one single movement for three. Go one, two. And then he'll try and free her, and he'll just go as best as he can in close combat, which is his one base plus two more. So he needs to get three on three. So he might need to use a reroll here. 
Yeah, yep, he's gonna have to spend one of his focus. There it goes. Just needs one success on one of these. Per perfect, why didn't you roll out the first time? He breaks her out of the ice, and she gets out of there. Good result, that just means Nightwing needs to work his way through the civilians at the top of the map, and then everybody can go push into the warehouse where Mr. Freeze is. Uh, Robin's doing nothing else with his turn. He can't. He, he can't reach anyone even with his range 4. He can't see them really either. So we're just going to skip his rest of his turn. And... Oh, it's the Crushers. So before the Crusher activates the Enforcers, again, they get an action because uh, a Henchman card has been drawn. So he's going to go 1-2 and then he can't move anymore. And I guess this guy will move there. Now the Crushers want to attack... They want to punch the person with the most HP, which is Supergirl. They move three, and they can't really get through the people in the way. So I think he's just going to stay there, because you can move there or there, sure, but... I guess, yeah, because he's, he's a blocker, he wants to stop people getting past. So he would move there, but he can't really do anything else. So what cards are left? Nightwing, and then, is that it? No, there's still another one. Who hasn't gone yet? Oh, the Enforcer's card hasn't been drawn yet. Well, is it them? Okay, it's them. Fair enough, we'll just do that real quick. Now they get two actions. So that means one of them's going to punch Supergirl. Because he's going to go 1-2, one, punch. And he's going to go 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two for his two actions. So one of them is punching her for two damage. And she's rolling six defense dice this turn. Because that's a perfectly cromulent number of dice. Six defense against two damage. Yep. She got three. Yep. She is totally fine, and we know Nightwing is the last card to be drawn for battle round one. And he's up. Well, Nightwing is starting his turn adjacent to. Oh, and I use the three lady hosties down here in the three male ones. You do. You get a six of each, I think, or five of each. Either way, he's going to try and break out the civilian. He's going to spend two doubles because I want to make sure he succeeds. So he's one base attack, plus four more, so that's five. And again, he's looking for at least three successes, of which he got four. So this civilian is freed. And then he shall initiate a ranged attack to try and free the other one that's at range two from him. Again, which is one base, and then he's spending a double. So he's only rolling three against this one, and he needs three successes. He didn't get it. He'll spend a focus, and he'll re-roll the block and try for it. Ah, didn't free him. Okay, so there's still two hostages, but that does take us to the end of Battle Round 1. Alright, Battle Round 2 starts with our dice. What do I want Batman to have this time? Do I want him to have anything specific? I do. I want him to have movement. Good chance of getting movement from him elsewhere, but I want him to have some guaranteed movement. Okay, well, there's some. He'll share the ranged to Robin, the move... To Nightwing, speaking of. Nightwing. Ooh, punches all around, huh? He'll share the block to Supergirl just to make her super powered. He'll keep a double for himself, share a double to Batman. And then Supergirl. Well, she gets her insight back. She hasn't lost any health. She'll share the double punch to... Ooh, she shares it to Nightwing. Nightwing could do like a really massive attack. She'll, she'll share the range to Robin, and she'll give herself a double move. Like all her symbols are doubles. And she has two um, bat symbols on her dice as well. And then Tim, he gets his insight back. And by which I mean focus every time. He only has punches to share. Well, no, hang on. He'll keep a punch for himself. He'll change this to a double move and share it with Batman. And the other punch goes like that. And with that, we can draw the first initiative card. I called it the right thing for one, so you proud of me? And it is going to be Supergirl going first. Alright, well, Supergirl just wants to crack more heads, basically. I want to take out the Enforcer in front of me, and then ideally do a ranged attack to take out the hired gun that was wounded. I think it was that one. Either way, one of them has one hit. So she's going to unleash a physical attack, the likes of which you've never seen. Her base is four. She's spending the single she got from Robin to bring that up to... Sorry, her base is three. Robin gives her one to bring up to four. Then she's spending a double, bringing that up to six. It's as good as she can make it. Yeah. And it is damage minus two. Yep. They have five HP. So damage minus two means that she's hit him for four. 
he would live on one health. Thank goodness you got that focus back because I want to spend it to reroll these and I just need one to be a success. Both are successes. She just, she's she's doing well. She's very powerful. Who'd have guessed that a Kryptonian would be very good? Then she'll do a range attack. Wait, does she even have a range attack? I guess she, everyone can do a range attack of some variety. She has an upgrade where you can buy her laser vision. I, I presume, I mean, she gets ranged dice, so sure, of course she must be able to. She'll initiate felonious assault on him. Base attack at three, plus two from a double being spent that she got for herself. So five dice. Damage minus two. Get these out of the way because I picked up more. The case starter stretch goals also included extra dice, incidentally, in case there's any really big attacks you ever need to roll for. So it is damage minus two. She did two. Took him out. Yeah, Supergirl could probably single-handedly do this scenario <laughs> by the looks of things. Well, no, not really, because she's getting good dice from her teammates, I guess, if you want to give them a pat on the head for doing something. She's got a double move, and she might as well. I want her to take the hits. So she'll spend the double move. She's not slowed by terrain or breakaways. Uh, did it say that for flying? Let's check live. I, just, I, I know I read it, but I just want to double check. I was correct. Do not need to break away. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So that means she has four movement and she's not slowed. So one, two, three, four. She is going after the big man himself. That might be hubris. You might pay for it, but we'll see what happens. And that's her turn. She's banking one defense she got from Nightwing. So she's five defense, six defense, current, uh, counting the invulnerability upgrade. And with that, who's next? The hired guns. So before the hired guns, the sole surviving enforcer wants to activate and he wants to go after the person with the least HP, which is Robin. I wonder, are you allowed to cut the corner between cells? Because that is a wall there. I'm actually not sure. Because he could go one, two, three. I guess we'll say that's fine. I'm not sure if you're allowed to cut corners like that on board changes. But either way, that's his move. And then the hired gun wants to hit the person with the most HP, which is Supergirl. So he'll just back up and sure and flat two damage four five six defense dice again for supergirl two damage she blocked exactly two took nothing from it this is it's like playing on easy mode bringing a kryptonian and now it is going to be robin who activates i guess tim might as well try and deal with the enforcer that's coming to get him so he'll do a ranged attack range two he was, oh, I totally forgot about his practice makes perfect, but I think he succeeded when he was doing a ranged attack before, didn't he? So he has one base, he's spending two doubles, one he got from Supergirl, one he got from Batman. And then practice makes perfect, throws in an extra one. He's rolling six dice, and it's damage minus two. So take away that two, he did two, four. He'll spend the focus, and I just need one hit on this. Perfect, so that goes away to his defense. Two, four, six. That was a good hit from Robin. Now he doesn't really have anything else to do. He'll spend his double move, I guess, which gives him six. To go one, two, three, four, five. And he'll wait on the ice there. And yeah, that, that's that's his turn. Nightwing can handle the other hostages, I think. Eventually. Speaking of which, so Nightwing is going to spend his single move he got from Batman, which gives him four. And because of the Master Acrobat upgrade I give him, he isn't slowed. So we're going to move that tile because he's going to go one, two, so he can be right next to both of them. And then he'll spend two doubles on the first one, and then he's got another double for the last one. So one base plus four for the first guy. Just needs three successes. Oh wow, that's terrible. <laughs> he'll spend a focus to reroll all these blocks. He just needs one of them to be a success. Okay, fine. Free this hostage, they run away. And then he only has one focus left. He'll spend his last double, so that's only three dice. Really needed the focus for this, although he doesn't get any detriments if he spends all his focus, I suppose. And it doesn't matter because he got three. So that's all the hostages off the board, so now we have two turns. Two full battle rounds, I mean, to get rid of Mr. Freeze. And then we're good. Although he is tanky. And next up is the Batman. Right, Batman's got a lot of movement icons, but you could also use that zip line I gave him. Move up to five spaces in a straight line as though you were leaping, which means you ignore the, the slow terrain. Any, any enemy figure you move through suffers an attack plus two. 
Okay. I think we can manage that. So if I use the zip line, I can move five spaces. So I want to end up here. So one, two, three, four, five, which means he needs to get to there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He would need six movement. So he'll spend two single feet. That gives him six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then he'll use the zip line. So again, moving a straight line, five as if you were leaping, so you ignore terrain. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, Mr. Freeze. Any enemies you pass through suffer an attack plus two. So his base is two, and then you get plus two. But crushers are tanky. They have three defense, so it's damage minus three, which would be nothing. Uh, he'll spend focus. I want to do a little bit of damage to that guy. He's tanky. So he did three of his eight. Yeah, three of his eight is done. Doesn't do anything to Mr. Freeze because he didn't pass through him. But he can attack him. He could roll, what, four dice against Mr. Freeze? Mr. Freeze has defense of three. Sure. Why not? So base of two, throwing in a double they got from Nightwing. So it's damage minus three. Nothing. Fair enough. Is there anything else he can do? Uh, he could move again, but I don't know if there's any point to do that. Uh, he can do a range attack. He'll do a range attack on the Crusher. Same dice. Damage minus three. Nothing. Alright. The dice rolls have started turning against me. And we'll need to move the camera again after we draw the next initiative card, which is... Enforcers. They're all dead. Yep. So it's just discarded. It will in fact be the Crusher. There we go. Move the camera a bit more so you can see where Batman ended up. Sorry, I didn't realise it wasn't fully on the camera. Uh, the Crusher's just going to stay still and punch Supergirl twice because he wants to attack the person with the most HP and she's right there. So she's four base defence, one from invulnerability, one from the defence die that Nightwing is giving her. So she's back at six again. But he's, a, he's, he's tough. He is hitting for four. So first attack. She blocks two and takes two. So she is taking damage. Two of her 15 health. She's still the one with the most HP. Oh, actually, she's drawing with Batman, so he'll still hit her. Because if it's even and she's got, uh, or he's got the target, he would go after her. So this time she is blocking two, and took two more. Oh wait, no, sorry, blocking three, blocking three. So she took a total of three damage because she took one from the second one. So she's down to 12 HP remaining. She she is hurt. It can, they can bleed, as it turns out. And what was the other thing? If the crusher deals at least two wounds, they receive one stun. I don't have the stun icon handy, but I'll go look for it because that's one less action, I think. I'll need to see what it does for a player character. Alright, here's the stun icon, his bullet getting hit on the back of the head. Uh, I guess we can put that on her base there. And she just has to spend a non-defense dice to get rid of it as a first action. So that's taking away some of her potency for Battle Round 3. And uh, we've only got... Who, who is this card? Freeze? Oh, it is. Okay, Mr. Freeze activates. Alright, this is not so good, because Mr. Freeze wants to attack the person with the lowest focus, which is Supergirl, and he is at his optimal range of three. So he is just going to shoot her three times for three damage each against her sixth defense. So that doesn't bode well. So, uh, yeah, three damage three times. First block, I know you can't really see, you just have to take my word for it. She fully blocked the first one. Second one. She fully blocked the second one. And then the third and final attack, I dropped that die so I will roll it. It doesn't matter because I've already rolled three successes. So she actually fully blocked the damage so his other thing doesn't come into effect, right? No, he needs to deal at least two wounds. At the end of his turn, place an icy terrain token under any enemy figure he attacked, okay? So the area underneath her is ice, which doesn't affect her because she's flying. Or has fly. But anyone else, that will now be a problem. And that does take us to the end of Battle Round 2 already. Alright, let's roll some dice. Mr. Freeze has a lot of health and a pretty good defense base. So I'm definitely giving Batman all the punches. Let's see what else he rolls. Ooh, even more punches. Now who else is likely to get in here with him? I don't think Nightwing is, but I want to give the range to Robin. So let's do it that way. Nightwing, he wants a lot of move here. Eh. He'll share the move with Batman so Batman can move in case Freeze moves first. 
he'll share the ranged with... No, he'll keep the ranged to himself and share the punches with Supergirl, because I want Supergirl to do a massive punch on Freeze as well. Speaking of which, double move. She'll share that with Robin. She'll share the punch and... Oh, she gets her focus back, and she might heal as well. It's, uh, uh, there we go. Does she heal? She actually healed two, so she's back up to only taking one damage. That's pretty good. And that will become double punches for sure. Did I share that with anyone, though? Might as well share that with Nightwing, I guess. And you'll keep that in the middle. And Tim's dice. Perfect. He'll share the... The... Hmm... That's tricky. He'll keep the double... No, he'll share the double with Batman. Just in case. He'll keep the double move for himself, because Batman's already in base to base with Freeze. And he's getting a single foot from Nightwing, yeah. And then he gets focus back for this bat symbol. And he'll change it to... Ooh, he'll change it to a punch and a block to give Supergirl another punch, because I don't think she really needs the defense. Although if Freeze goes before her, she will, because she's going to take all three hits again. Because she's still got the lowest focus. So, yeah, I think that's everything. I'll get the icon shared out once we know who's going first. And this turn it is... The Hired Gun. Alright, our surviving Hired Gun is already in position to shoot at Supergirl, so he's just going to shoot at her twice. Again, her base defense is four, and she's currently got two shields, one of her own and one from Robin. As I get a text message, I'll need to check. So, I lost count, hang on. So that's four, five, six, and then invulnerability gives her seven, right? Yeah, because she's defend plus one. And this is three damage. Sorry, two damage coming in twice. She shouldn't have any problem blocking this. I should never say that before rolling, because she only just blocked the first shot. And then the second shot... She fully blocked it as well. I also, I was looking at, she definitely get rid of Nightwing's grapple and give him a zipline as well, because he doesn't need the grapple if he's got the Master Acrobat upgrade, really. So yeah, that's him done. So we'll just draw the next card, and then I'll go check that text quickly. It's going to be Mr. Freeze. Oh, Supergirl might be in trouble. So yeah, Mr. Freeze's turn is just going to come down to three shots at Supergirl, and she's rolling seven dice each time this time, because of her invulnerability and the two defense that she has on top of her base of four. So it's three damage three times. Let's see how she does. First time she blocks it fully with four. Second time she blocked it fully with three. And then last time she blocked one and took two. So she's back up to three damage. Apparently that's the magic number. And with that, Mr. Freeze is done. And next on the little chopping block, aha, revenge. So first things first, Supergirl has to spend an icon to, to shake the stun, so she'll spend a fist and get rid of that. Then she'll spend her double move. And again, she's flying, so she's not hindered by the crusher or the ace. And she has more than enough to go right next to Mr. Freeze to say, hello, I am here to punch you. And she's going to unleash quite the punch, because she's going to go all in on a hit. So, her base attack of four. She's spending a double she got from Nightwing for two more. She's spending her own double for two more. Then she's spending a shield punch she got from Robin for one more. So that's two, four, six, eight. That's nine dice. So this is nine dice minus three. So if we take away the three that's getting blocked automatically, so far she's doing five. She will spend one of her focus to re-roll the three block results. Oh, that's good. So that's two, four, six. She did eight damage to him. <laughs> eight damage. So there you go, Mr. Freezer. Six and seven, eight. Unfortunately, that's her turn completely done. She can't do anything else. I technically could swap out Flight at this point. Maybe give her laser vision, but her punching is doing so well. I don't think I need to... Mr. Freeze has 10 health left, and we've got half of this turn and all of the next turn to get him. And with that, I think it's... Oh, the Crusher might go, right? Nope, it's going to be Robin. Alright, for Robin, incidentally, I was just thinking there between shots, I, I said I didn't bring Etrigan because he could just teleport to Mr. Freeze and start punching him straight away, ignoring the whole 
the whole point of this, which is having to navigate across a bunch of ice. And Supergirl is, of course, doing the exact same thing. Just, well, at least she didn't teleport to him. She had to get in there. She punched her way through Henchman, whereas Etrigan can literally teleport to any square in the map if you get enough dice to spend on it. Either way, Tim Drake's spending two double moves, one for himself, one he got from Supergirl. That's six movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not great. I'm sorry for the abrupt cut. I felt a sneeze coming on. As I was saying, probably, he's going to do a ranged attack from where he's standing against the crusher there, because again, yellow terrain does not block scenery. I uh, block line of sight, rather. So he's got one base plus one from practice makes perfect, and then he's spending a double of his own and a double he got from Batman for four more dice. And he's at range three, but he's okay up to range four, thanks to his practice makes perfect. So it is damage minus three. Which currently is nothing. Nothing at all. He'll spend one of his focus to reroll the three blocks. So this is just the damage because the other ones are negated. Ugh, he did one. He took him to four. Not good enough. But is there anything else he can do? No, not really. No, we'll just have to draw the next card. Nightwing. I'm not really sure if Nightwing can be of any use this turn. He's not slowed, I guess, so let's see what we can do. He's only got a single foot, though, which gives him four. So, one, two, three, four. He can do a ranged attack. He can't do a good ranged attack. He can't punch, though, so why not? So, he'll spend the one double he has. He's rolling three dice, and it's damage minus three. <laughs> well, then. That was a very quick, abrupt... I guess he technically could have used his throwing blade, but I didn't say he was, so I won't do it. Next up is the Crusher. Okay, we can just uh, quickly do that because he wants to attack the person with the most HP, I think it was. Uh, yep, most HP currently is Batman. So he is going to move next to Batman and attack him for three damage. Four, four damage, sorry. That's quite a lot. Batman's defense is currently just three. So four damage coming in. He blocked two and took two, which also triggers the stun condition, I think. Run out of damage icons. There we are. He's taken two. Yep, he is stunned. Which is unfortunate because he hasn't had his turn yet and I was hoping to do a really large punch. Speaking of which, we might be his card now. I think he's the last one. It is, alright. Give me a chance to think what I want to do. Alright, there's some plays to be made here for sure. He'll spend his single foot icon to get rid of the stun. Because he doesn't need to move anyway. And then he's going to do a punch attack on Mr. Freeze. He's got his base attack of two and he's spending two doubles of his own. So he's rolling six dice against Mr. Freeze. And it is damage minus three. I'm going to try and roll it here. So it's damage minus three. So currently he's doing one. I'll definitely spend a focus point to reroll the three blocks. Alright, that's pretty good. So he did, that was a punch. So he's done four damage to him, I'll take that. So, two, that's four more damage added on. So he's at 12 damage, so he has six HP left. The only other thing he can do is a ranged attack. And he can do it by spending his throwing blade. I'll just show you Nightwings because I don't want to look at his, but he has one. So, plus one battle die and doesn't weaken for the first four squares. He's chucking a batarang, one, two, three at the hired gun here. So his base would normally be two, but the throwing glaive, or throwing blade, sorry, throws in one, and he's spending two double icons for four more dice, and his damage minus two. Uh, I'm gonna have to roll this down here, it's too many dice. Damage minus two means he's doing two, four, five. Goodbye, hired gun. That is them out of there. That's also his turn done, and we're at the end of battle round three, so we have to take out Mr. Freeze's six HP in the next turn, or we lose. Alright, we are hoping for lots of aggression here, so I'm giving Batman a central double punch. He's got a move and a foot. Who could benefit from the move? Nightwing. Get him in there, and I guess give Robin the defense, although it doesn't really matter. Nightwing. Okay, he's got a bat symbol, so he's getting one inside back. He's got no damage. He'll share the block to Supergirl, because she's going to get shot at by Mr. Freeze. He'll share the double... No, he'll keep the double to himself. Give himself a... Mm. Yeah, he's got a double punch. He'll share that with Batman so Batman can do a big punch. And then Supergirl. 
two bat symbols, so she gets back, well she only has two max focus, so that's back, but she gets back three health, so she's back to full health. She'll keep the block for herself, because she's the most likely to get shot, or lasered, whatever. She'll share the double fist with Nightwing, and double ranged with Robin. Robin himself, he gets one focus back. He'll share the double with Batgirl, punch with Batman, and yeah, he'll keep a double to himself so he can do a pretty good double attack. Alright, we've only got to do, what, 6 HP, 5 HP to him? Let's see who's going first. I took the hired gun card out in advance this time. Oh, it is Robin. Alright, unfortunately for Robin, who is here, he has no movement. So I'm just going to do a long range attack. Now he doesn't start to degrade his long range attacks until after 4, so 1, 2... Oh, never mind, he's actually perfect range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, okay, never mind, it's fine. So he's got his base of 1 plus 1 for practice makes perfect. And then he's spending 3 doubles for 6 more dice to do the mother of all ranged attacks. It's the only thing he's doing with his turn. And he has focus, and it's damage, minus 3, and uh, I'm going to have to roll over here because there's a lot of dice. So it's damage minus 3, so let's take away the 3 that Freeze is blocking. That means he's currently doing 4, how much health does Freeze have? He has 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he has 6 HP left and he's currently taking 4. There's a chance. I'm going to spend focus. We need 2 damage here. Oh! Okay, I, I think that is it, right? He's blocking three, two, four, six, on top of the 12 he has. Robin, of all people, he just chucks a batarang around Batman, clubs Mr. Freeze in the back of the head, while Supergirl's distracting him, and took him out. So that was a victory for the heroes at the top of turn four, the final battle round. And the victory condition, if the heroes win, is as follows. Mr. Freeze may not have gone all the canisters, but he did get away with enough to finish his freeze ray. The heroes need more clues to track down this chilling villain. And then it carries on to Heart of Ice Act 2, which I believe starts with the heroes being captured. Yeah, the, the scenario is like you're escaping from a freezer. So a lot more ice, although Mr. Freeze himself isn't there, it's just a bunch of hired goons. Okay, and if we had lost this one, we would have started in a much worse situation in the next one. There's no bonus, as far as I can tell, for winning, but you're just avoiding a, a negative debuff when you're starting next time. Supergirl is obviously very, very, very powerful, so it might be a little bit unfair bringing her to, to these ones where you've just got to beat up a villain because she's very good at that. Um, I, I feel like we probably would have struggled a, a whole lot more if Batgirl was here instead, or anyone, really, that isn't a brawler. These missions kind of need your brawly type characters, not like the Dragon Ball character, you know what I mean. People who brawl. So I think we're going to stick with her for the Heart of Ice scenario. Maybe. And then when we get to the next scenario, she'll kind of be the wild card that I swap out. Because I like Nightwing, Batman and, and Robin. So we can have like that one variable space. If there's a particular character you want to see once we get out of Heart of Ice, you can by all means let me know. I could bring in Etrigan then if you want. Or Zatanna. If you're not sure which characters there are that are playable, check the unboxing because I looked through all the cards in that. So anyway, Heart of Ice Act 1, that's a victory for the heroes. I will hopefully see you in a week, maybe a bit longer just because of the Christmas holidays and whatnot, we'll see. But I shall see you for the next part somewhere in the future. Until then, ta for now.